Hey everybody, welcome! Falcon, Convoy, if you're wondering what Convoy's all about, I would say that's a very good question. If I had to kind of give my two cents into the whole equation here, why my opinion is only worth two cents is really beyond me, but that's not the point. What Convoy is, honestly, usually when I do this I try to avoid using developers, I guess, um, words and descriptions for their games, but honestly, the game is kind of coined as a game that kind of meets, uh, it's like FTL meets Mad Max in a future type of post-apocalyptic setting, and honestly, that actually fits the bill to the T. The convoy has a lot of inspirations of FTL when you play the game. It's like, you know, obviously a roguelike, meaning perma-dead. You have parts that you kind of upgrade, you have convoys, you have military vehicles that you kind of have to buy little parts in, and the parts actually are really reminiscent to FTL, oddly enough, which is, I feel like, kind of more of an homage than just kind of like a straight-up copy-paste type of scenario here. And what's really good about it is that it's kind of really simplistic, too. You know, you don't have to be a genius, which is, you know, good for me, to kind of figure out the game really quickly. And I feel like that's always, like, one of the best things that a roguelike type of game could do. And that is actually, you know, just make it really easy to grab and go, kind of get the understanding, and then as you kind of progress through the game, you kind of start getting that little roguelike IQ going up. Like, you know, if I have to go back to FTL, for instance, you know, you start off with FTL, you start picking up weapons randomly, and you're like, oh, this works out pretty good, this works out pretty fine. But eventually, you start kind of knowing what are the actual items that you kind of need to make a successful run here. Convoy actually plays up to that degree quite well. A lot of different weapons to choose from, a lot of different systems, a lot of different upgrades. But again, not everything's going to be a winning formula for you. Then again, in a roguelike game, there's also a lot of kind of luck involved. And just, you know, hopefully RNGs just kind of plays you pretty well. So we're just going to go into a new game. I will kind of work as your tutorial person here, and already we're kind of fated for disaster if that's the case now, isn't it? But that's besides the point. So once you get over here, this is kind of like your choose your character type of screen, right? When it comes to, um, once the game is fully developed, fully released, right now we are looking at a release of February 2015, if I am correct. What you're looking at here, essentially, is basically, this is gonna be your main convoy. This is kinda be, this is your bread and butter. If your main convoy goes down, that's it, man. Game over. These guys over here on the side are kinda like, you know, your, your posse in a sense, you know, they're gonna be doing most of the major combat for you. If you wanna go back to FTL again, think of this as your subsystems in a sense, right? They're gonna be doing most of the combat for you. Your ship will have a quote-unquote special type of um, quality to it, right? They will either launch a certain type of missile, a certain type of drone. I guess not really drone, but there are kind of drones in the game too. Again, there's a lot of FTL inspiration in here, so if you were a big FTL fan, believe me, you're gonna feel right in home right here. So, for our main convoy, we're just gonna go with the basic one. There's a few over here to choose from, and I'm pretty sure as the game continues in development until February, which is not too far off now, they'll probably add a few more of these. So. For our units, you could also kind of rotate these a bit. The units are actually chosen through this side over here. So, for instance, this is our vanilla ones. Then we have these bad boys over here, these bad boys over here, etc., etc. And you could actually see that they all differ from stats, they all differ from looks, and they all have different type of, um, you know, weapon capacity and things of that nature. We're going to roll with just the basic vanilla this time around, just to kind of get a feel for it. I was kind of considering going on easy here, but we're going to go on normal. And we're going to start off with 160 bolts and 76 gasoline. So maybe easy might be the right correct the correct answer to do here just because I'm not familiar with the game too much myself. I did start playing it a little bit just in my own time to kind of get a feel for it. Next thing you know, I was kind of like balls deep in a run and I was just kind of like, oh man, I was going to play this for like 10, 15 minutes. Next thing you know, it's like an hour or two and I'm just kind of like, oh shit, way too much time. But that's besides the point. We're gonna go with normal here and hopefully we have a decent run just to kind of show off some of the features in the game. So let's start the game off over here. Alrighty, so welcome to Convoy. We're gonna basically, not gonna skip the intro, but let's go to continue here really quickly just to get a little bit of information what we're doing. After enduring an unexpected solar flare, your spaceship was forced to make an emergency landing into planet Omic Prime due to critical damage to its primary systems. The captain has ordered you to traverse the planet in search of replacement parts obtaining. These will allow the spaceship to continue its mission. The captain wants you to collect the following parts and bring them to the spaceship. Compression coil, flux capacitor, yes, we're talking about the flux capacitor, even involving Doc Brown too, so, you know, if you're a man of references, believe me, there's a lot of them in this game. Hyperdrive stabilizers, self-sealing stem bolts, Omic Prime is a world filled with danger, three factions vie for control of the planet, they are the Privateers, the Raiders, and the Torvac Corporation. Managing to survive in this harsh world where most arguments are settled with violence is key to, to your success. Any questions? Um. Well, I'm going to say any questions, but just to give you a rundown, the privateers are basically a group that's more in it for the wealth itself 
Raiders are going to be, you know, just out for blood, as you can imagine. And then the Torvac Corporation kind of has its own little agenda. They're kind of like the people who kind of run this wasteland that you're in, in a sense. A lot of technological advancement, things of that nature. So those are the kind of like the main people you'll be dealing with in terms of um, adversaries and things of that nature. And your objectives, you basically have to find these over here. Let's read out the flux capacitor just because, you know, I'm kind of, um... <laughs> I like the reference, to be honest with you. The flux capacitor consists of a rectangle-shaped compartment with three flashing geyser tubes. It requires 1.21 gigawatts of electrical power to operate. Hmm, 1.2 gigawatts. Where have I heard that one before? Omic Prime is a local professor who should have access to a flux capacitor. Finding him might allow you to require this item. Alrighty, so we're fine over here. Never mind, let's go. Alrighty, so once you're over here, this will be your main map. This is where you're going to do most of your traveling in the game itself. You have your main objectives over here on this side. And um, basically clicking on any one of these bad boys will give you an arrow as to where is the destination of the item or even side quests that you kind of want to complete. For instance, we're going to be going to the flux capacitor first just so we could kind of meet up with Doc Brown. It's telling me that's going to be 159 kilometers this way. And again, this will tell you just about everything else. There's always going to be an arrow indicating where you should be heading to kind of either get a mission underway or kind of complete a side quest in the same process itself. And again, you also have to kind of consider your fuel. Make sure that you have enough fuel to get to your location and back. And also, there's going to be camps along the way where you can kind of go and either buy more fuel, um, revitalize your main convoy, health, and also get upgrades, and actually even buy more fighting units for yourself too. So we're going to go to the flux capacitor first. As they say, it says 159 this way. Let's go and check it out over here. Alrighty. So right here we're dealing with the blue. If I'm right, blue is um, Torvax. So we're going into the Torvax section. You can tell we are kind of running into um, by keeping the faction um, thing on. If you turn this on over to terrain, it'll remove that off of your map. But I like to roll it with the factions on just so I have an idea as to what kind of events and what kind of dangers I'm running by going through a, uh, a specific part of the map over here. And much like most roguelike games, this is going to be also randomly generated, so every single time you play the game, complete a different map, complete a different event. So right here we have a, a random event, as a matter of fact. You spot a non-functioning Torvac Corporation vehicle by the side of the road. Let's investigate the wreck. You strip the vehicle and manage to obtain 99 scrap. Nice. That's actually free 99 scrap, which is needed to, you know, buy upgrades and things of that nature. Speaking of which, if you want to do upgrades, um, if you go down over here to points of interest, if you go to nearest camp, it will tell you where the nearest camp is where you could go and either level up your vehicles by buying upgrades or buying more um, vehicles to protect your main convoy. As, I've, if I, as I'm pretty sure I stated before, but the main convoy is basically the game over's point. You could, you know, take damage to your um, fighting units over here and even actually have them, you know, get destroyed and lose them. But if your main convoy goes down, then it is game over for sure. So let's go over here. This is going to be where the flux capacitor is located. You arrive at the professor's laboratory. The plot around it is littered with various bits of machinery, presumably discarded experiments, whilst the laboratory itself appears to be an old hangar. Let's approach it. As you head over to the laboratory, a white-haired, distraught-looking man walks out. White-haired and distraught-looking, huh? Where have I seen that one before? He looks startled as he's, he looks startled as he sees you, adjusts his glasses and exclaims frantically, What? How? You found me! I'm warning you! I've got high... I've got mighty science weapons things, I'm not afraid to use them. Alright, let's calm him down a little bit here. After explaining that you're stranded on Omic Prime and you're in need of a flux capacitor, the professor looks a lot less panicked, although still slightly erratic. I see, I see. No revenge squad out to get me for the lack of payment. Excellent! Ah, that sounds familiar too. A good thing, too, you might be surprised to learn that I was, in fact, bluffing about my mighty science weapon things. Yeah, I figured as much. So, a flux capacitor, you say? I've been experimenting on those things I have, trying to assemble one of the one to a regular road vehicle. The possibilities are endless. Unfortunately, because of the capacitor needs such a high energy input, I made a rather unfortunate deal with some local arms dealers. It didn't go too well. They're out from my head right now. But you look like a capable bunch. If you go ahead and take care of those nasty privateers arms dealers for me, I'll get exact. I'll get you that flux capacitor for your spaceship. So this is actually pretty interesting because when I did this off camera myself, I got a different quest for this exact main objective. I'm not going to say what that one was, but it's completely different than this one. So yeah, we'll help you out. So we're going to basically have to come over here and get into a fight, it seems. So that's pretty cool. I get to show off some of the combat in the game, which is actually really fun in itself, too. Um, much like FTO, it's very, like, um, strategic-based. You kind of have to kind of move your vehicles in a proper format to kind of be in a... Oop, we have another random event here. As you drive through the desert, you spot what looks like to be a huge swarm of locusts. We can either keep going or divert the course. Um, let's keep going, I guess? The locusts don't trouble your vehicles in the slightest and you drive through safe. Alright. 
<laughs> just a random event. So, uh, much of the battle itself, you could pause the game much like you would in, you know, FTO to kind of get your bearings, see what you want to do here. But better than talk about that, I will show you that itself. Um, you found a privateer arms dealer who had been troubling the professor. Let's approach them. They don't seem to have noticed your approach, so they are like they are taken completely by surprise as you open fire. Excellent. So we're gonna have a little bit of a. Oh, so that changes as well. You can have a little bit of a upstart here for ourselves. So, as you can see, this is going to be the main battle area. Our main convoy is just hanging out right over here. This is your bread and butter. If this completely goes out, game over. You are allowed to lose your regular vehicles. We have Rock Lancer over here, and we also have... Where's my other dude at? Turbo Banana. So we're dealing with... These are our guys, and we're dealing with one, two, and three vehicles. Alrighty. So what I mentioned about tactical combat is you got to make sure which is probably the most danger to your main convoy because you want to keep that from taking less damage as possible. The blue bars will signify your shield in a sense which will actually mitigate some of the damage that you take to your health. Some weapons only actually focus on your shield, some weapons only focus on health. So you know if you're familiar with FTL you're going to be right at home with this one. So let's see here we're going to be going with this guy first and I think this guy worries me a bit more. So let's move you back a little bit over here and target this man. You are going to be going down over here. And let's have you... Ooh, lasers over on this side, huh? Let's have you target this gentleman over here because he's being kind of a dickbag right now. Alrighty, and then our main convoy itself also does have a weapon here. Now, this one is kind of based on charge time here. So, what's actually pretty good about this one, it, is, it actually hits a spray damage of a cross. But, because these guys aren't together, I can't necessarily hit both of them at once. Let me just wait it out a little bit. Hopefully, they kind of gather up. It doesn't seem like they are. Maybe I can coax this man into moving down by... Oh, there we go. Perfect. So you can also do a lot of combat like this, where you kind of maneuver your vehicles around to kind of get a tactical advantage. So by moving myself upwards to here with this unit, this guy decided to come down, which means now I can just launch a rocket right here in front and hit both of them, as you can see right there, for damage. Excellent. Alrighty, so you keep working on this guy. You, you know, dogfight it out with this man over here, too. This guy's just about to go down. If you're wondering, the convoy cannot move. The convoy's gonna be in the center the entire time, so yeah, no fucking around with this dude. We're almost done over on this side, though, which is a good thing. Hopefully. Sooner than later. Sooner than later, motherfucker. There we go. So he's down now, and we also have our rocket over here ready to go. Let's actually help this man out over here. Good. Keep working on this guy. You need to come down over here now and give me a hand down with this individual. Alright, so two down, only one to go. Now that we have that coming over here, let's have you come over on this side. Alrighty. So I want to keep them right here because if our rocket goes up again, which it will, we should have a pretty good thing over here. Boomski. That should have been it, but okay, there we go. Completely done. Alrighty. And after you finish this up, you'll get a little bit of a um, reward type of system here. You defeated, you defeated all the privateer arms dealers and that were bothering the professor. You find some loot in the wrecks, you got 19 fuel and 55 bolts. Probably not enough to mitigate the damage that we took ourselves personally, but you know, it's part of the main quest itself, so it is needed to be done. Great. You should return to the laboratory to tell the professor the good news. Onwards. Alrighty. So we're gonna open the map over here. Before we head over to the professor, we might want to check out a camp to heal up. So let me see, nearest camp is gonna be 66 kilometers this way, so I want to show off some of the... I guess upgrading system as well? We're running through um, privateer or raider colony right now, so a lot of uh, chances for fights over here. And this is going to be the camp over here. Oh, nope. Not the camp yet. We actually ran into another random event before that. You spot a figure in the distance that looks like somebody bound to a pole. Let's head over to investigate. You discover a severely mutilated man tied to a pole. He appears delusional but emits a faint nose that sounds like raiders. It doesn't look like he has long to live. So do we want to free him and bring him to a medical bay? Or poor fellow better put him out of his misery? Let's see what happens if you free him and take him to the medical bay. Thanks to your medical attention, the man seems to recover. He thanks you for your help and explains that he's an engineer captured by the raiders and left for dead when he sees being useful. He begs you to return him home and he'll be able to properly reward you there. Um, yeah, sure, why not? Alrighty, so... Left for dead is now a side objective here. So left for dead is 286 kilometers this way. So, we'll keep that in mind, but I want to go into the camp right now. So, nearest camp. Let's come over here. And you can just enter the camp by clicking up here when you're near a camp itself. And this will be kind of like where you level up, in a sense. Your characters, your convoys, your units, and things of that nature. So, we could come over here and do some repairing first, which is what we want to do. So, it'll cost us 5 bolts to recover 200 um, armor points and hit points. So, 
Let's see about getting this guy up and running. This guy as well. And especially our main convoy here. So we've wasted about... We wasted about, like, you know, just about what we got from that battle we already wasted. So, you know, it is what it is, but at least our guys are up and running pretty well here. Let's go into the shop itself. We probably don't have enough money to actually buy another vehicle. Not that there's another vehicle for sale. Sometimes there are, but this time there isn't. But we have a few weapons here. So if you just hover over them, it'll tell you, you know, what the weapon's all about. This is the medium beam laser. Bigger version of the light beam laser cannot miss. We also have a shield MK2. Shield prevents more damage than the MK1, but also has a longer recharge time. We also have the shield MK1, and we also have the medium rocket artillery. So again, this will tell you like the damage that it causes, the very low time, things of that nature. Any sort of description that comes along with the item, it will tell you right here. So again, if you're familiar with FTL, you're going to be right at home again. Alright, so before I do any of this, let's call it an episode here. I just wanted to show off some of the fighting in the game, some of the level up system, and also some of the story and random events, which I think I, we covered. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, I encourage you to leave a thumbs up, leave a like. The support does mean a lot. If you're interested in Convoy itself, the description in the bottom should have a few links to kind of check it out on your own and see if um, it's something worth your time. Personally, I'm having a blast with it myself with how limited time I've played already. I can see this taking up a lot of my free time in 2015, which is the date that the game is set to release. I think sometime February 2015. So again, if you have that FTL itch, so man, and you want to play something new, check this out when it comes down. You'll definitely enjoy it. I almost guarantee it because I'm already having a blast with it myself. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I will catch you next time.